The government calls Michael Anderson. Michael Anderson, having been duly sworn, testified as follows. State your full name and correct spelling for the record, please. Michael Anderson, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. Good morning, Michael. Can you introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury and tell them where you are originally from? Say it again. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Central City, New Orleans, Louisiana. How old are you? 29. All right. So, since you're in an orange jumpsuit with some handcuffs, I want to talk a little about your criminal history. You are currently serving a life sentence, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. That is pursuant to a plea you entered in 2011? Yes, ma'am. Pursuant to that plea, you pled guilty to count one, which was a conspiracy to commit RICO, and count two, a conspiracy to distribute 280 grams or more of cocaine base and a quantity of cocaine hydrochloride, heroin, and marijuana, and count six, in which you were charged with murder in aid of racketeering. Is that what you pled guilty to? Yes, ma'am. Also pursuant to that plea agreement, you entered a no contest plea in state court to five counts of manslaughter under North Carolina versus Alford. Would that be right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Those two pleas, both the federal government plea and your state plea, those sentences are to run what's called concurrent and coterminous. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So pursuant to your plea agreement, you also have agreed to cooperate with the government? Yes, ma'am. You're cooperating in hopes of receiving a sentence less than life? Yes, ma'am. So if for some reason the government files what's called a motion or Rule 35 motion requesting a reduction in your sentence in the federal case, is it your understanding if Judge Feldman was to grant that and reduce your sentence that your state sentence would be reduced the same? Yes, ma'am. Now, you also have a prior 2007 conviction for being a felon in possession of a firearm? Yes, ma'am. Then you also have a 2004 conviction for possession of crack cocaine? Yeah. Now, you stated that you were from Central City? Yeah. Where in Central City did you grow up? I stayed. I lived on Josephine Street, St. Andrew, and LaSalle, like Felicity Street. I stayed on Jackson Avenue. I stayed on Dry Aids, Aretha Castle Haley Street. Okay. And you have been incarcerated or in jail since when? 2006. So you have been incarcerated since 2006 to today in 2016? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I want to take you, obviously, to before 2006. Who were you living with when you were living in Central City? 2006? Just any time period before you got incarcerated. I was living with my mother. Do you have any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have one sister, one brother who is living. I have two brothers dead. I'm sorry? I have two brothers dead. I have one sister who is still living and another brother. Okay, and your two brothers who are dead, what were their names? One named Corey Anderson and the other one Jerome Anderson. Corey Anderson, did he have a nickname? Coco. Okay, was he older? Yeah, that's my oldest brother. Now, when you were out on the streets and not incarcerated, did you sell drugs? Yes, ma'am. At what age did you start selling drugs? Probably about 13 years old. If I can ask you a little bit, how far did you go in school? 8.5. It's like when you, you don't complete 8th grade. You don't actually make it to the ninth grade, but they call it like an 8.5, like base level thing. Okay, so eighth grade and plus half a year or so? I don't know how it really means. I just know that they call it 8.5, special ed, whatever, you know, special education classes, whatever. Okay, so when you were in school, were you in special ed classes? Yes, ma'am. How old were you when you were in eighth grade? 16. Now, I'm sorry, how old were you when you started selling drugs again? At 13. When you started selling drugs around the age of 13, what were you selling? Marijuana. 
Did you at some point in time begin to sell something else? Yes, I started selling crack cocaine. Can you explain to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury how you began to sell crack cocaine? I started selling crack cocaine when I came home from juvenile prison in 2013 and my brother friend, George Jackson, he is the first one like came to me. He explained to me because I've been knowing him all my life, but he came to me like, man, I just come home from jail. What are you gonna do with yourself? Like, man, you gotta get out there and get money. I know you want cars, motorbikes, you know, things you like to get or whatever. He like, man, since your brother dead, I'm your big brother now, you know what I'm saying? So George Jackson, did he have a nickname? Yeah, Black. Okay. When you are talking about your older brother, who, Coco, was he friends with your older brother? Yeah, him and my brother was best friends. All right. Who else did you know from growing up? You said you knew him your whole life. Who else did you know from that area? I knew George Jackson, Black, Dump, Terrell, well, Derek Smothers, Dump. Terrell, Terrell Smothers, Nikia Hankton, Inus, Anthony Commodore, Buki, Derny, Pluck, Rodney Robinson. I'm going to show you some pictures, Michael. Can I show you Government Exhibit 56, please? Do you recognize him? That is Charles Jackson. That's who you were talking about a minute ago? Right. If I can admit that, Your Honor, I don't think that one has been admitted yet, number 56. So ordered. Exhibit 51, do you know who that individual is? Nakia Hankton. Number 52, do you know who that is? Shirley Hankton. Number 53, Telly Hankton. Number 52, do you know who that is? Shirley Hankton. Number 53, Telly Hankton. Number 54, Squirt, Thomas Hankton. Okay, 55, Troy Hankton. 58, Daryl Smothers, Dump. 59, Terrell Smothers. Okay, if I can show you 239. Oh, Pluck, Brian Broussard, yeah, yeah. 240, Rodney Robinson, Doodoo. 242, Darnell, D. Thank you. All those people I just showed you, did you know them from growing up? Yeah, we grew up in the same neighborhood. I showed you several pictures of the Hanktons. Did you know them while growing up? Yeah, we like interrelated, like Thomas Hankton and my cousin had a baby for him. My cousin got two kids with Dump, Derek's mothers. Like some of the Hanktons have kids from my uncles. One of them, like my little niece, she came to the Hanktons too. A Hankton had a baby from my brother. Okay, so so we like close to kin, cousins or whatever you want to call it, in-laws. Okay, and you personally knew them growing up? Yeah, my grandma raised up next to their grandma, Bernice Hankton, on Jackson and Dryads. Then I stayed on Josephine. We all stayed in like the same areas and stuff like that. Okay, your grandmother was who? My grandmother? Dorothy Tabor. I'm sorry, what was her name? Her name Dorothy. They call her Miss Dorothy. She lived where? On Jackson and Dryad Street. When she lived on Jackson and Dryad, who lived next to her? Miss Bernice Hankton. That's the Hankton's grandma. So I guess back a little bit to talking about George. When you got out of juvenile, was George trying to help you get on your feet? Yeah, he brought me like, he gave me some money to go buy some clothes and shoes because I ain't had none when I just got out of jail and asked me what I wanted to do when I got out or whatever, like get money, go back to stealing cars, you know, just a bunch of crazy young stuff or whatever. And I told him I was going to chill or whatever. So he gave me some drugs and like, look, man, this is what you need to do. What kind of drugs did he give you? He gave me some crack cocaine. How much did he give you? Two and a quarter like two ounces and one quarter of crack. Okay, you're talking about ounces, you said? Yeah, two ounces and one quarter of crack. They call it two and a quarter. Did you know what to do with it? Well, George explained to me like how to weigh it and stuff. He was telling me how to get a scale, weigh it, 
Point two would go for ten dollars. Point four would go for like twenty dollars, and three grams go for like an eight ball or whatever. So if you just break it down, he was telling me I could make at least three thousand dollars. But if you want to sell it fast or whatever, you just sell like point four eight balls and stuff like that. Did you do that? Yes. Did you go out and get a scale for yourself? No. He had told me. He brought me to a store called Jimmy's on Desire and Galvez. You go there and they sell like cut for drugs and scales and bags and all these things like that. Can you explain what cut is? Oh, cut is like a substance you put on a cocaine or whatever. Something like baking soda. Another thing called quinine. You put on a cocaine to scratch it or whatever so it don't mess with the user's health or whatever. They can just smoke it and... Okay, so to help. Is that to help turn it into crack? Yeah, turn it into crack and scratch your drugs or whatever. All right. And you end up making more money if you add... Yeah, if you stretch them, you make more money and you break out down in bags and stuff like that. So were you able to sell that two and a quarter ounces of crack that George gave you? Yeah, when I sold it, I brought him. He told me, you know, I came back to him. The whole thing was when he gave it to me, he wanted me to score drugs on him, only him. Because, you know, he the only one that helped me out when I get out. He like, man, don't worry about the rest of these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, I'm your big brother now. Just chill, you know, and we're going to get this money or whatever and just hang with me. So did you continue to sell drugs? Yes, ma'am. Did you continue to get it through George? Yes. How often were you? Well, first of all, the two and a quarter. How much did you end up selling that for about? Well, after breaking it all down, give or take, you might make $2,300, $2,500. So after I take that, I'll go back to him with the $2,100, keep some for myself, you know. So you made a couple hundred dollars off of it? Yeah, for myself. And I went at him with the $2,100. Then whatever I buy from there, he front me. So now it's like with the ball rolling out when you are in a position to get your own. So I got a quarter key from him. Can you explain what fronting means? Front mean like when you have half of the money already, then the other half of the money is given to you like a loan and you got to pay it back. So whenever you pay the money you owe back, then you always like go for credit to get more drugs from him for free or whatever. So you give some money for the drugs, but you also still owe some money? Owe money, like you in debt for like $2,500, whatever he'll give you. Okay, so they'll give you the drugs even though you haven't given the full payment for the drugs. Full payment, yes. All right. Then after you sell the drugs, you give them that money? Yeah, you give them the money you owe them, you know. And sometimes they want you to come back with more money to keep you going or whatever. Right. And so how often were you selling drugs? Every day. Okay. You know, every day you out there selling drugs or whatever. So every time I finished, I go re-up and keep bringing him money. And you just keep going. And so they will tell you the bigger they get, the bigger you get. So you just get money. Were you always getting two and a quarter of crack from George? Well, I always pay for the two and a quarter. The four and a half, that's the 21, right? That go for a four and a half. Okay, so if I can try to understand that, so you pay for two and a quarter, and would you get an additional two and a quarter? I was getting a four and a half and got an additional four and a half with him. Okay. Yeah, so it's a quarter key. Okay, how long did it take you to get to the point where you were getting a quarter of a kilo of crack from George? How long did it take? Yeah, from when you got out of juvie. Oh, about three days. Two days, three days. They don't. The neighborhood, they got people riding around, walking around all day looking for drugs. I'm saying, so you're making the money constantly by the hours, all day, every day. So were there lots of customers in that area? Yeah, they pulling up on bikes, they walk in, they coming in cars, they coming from everywhere, every day. Does it happen all day long? Every day, all night, people come in looking for drugs. You have some people selling weed, heroin, selling crack, powder, just everything. Okay, and were other people out there selling drugs too, besides you? Yes, a lot of people. A lot of photographs that I just showed you, were some of those people selling drugs too? All of them. What types of drugs were they selling? Crack cocaine, weed, and heroin. 
What's the drug that was kind of the dominant drug in that area? Cocaine. Now, did you always get crack from George? Yes. Would you ever buy powder? I did it one time, but I don't, because I always sell crack, that's all I sell because I don't know how to cook it up and stuff. So if I buy from them, they got to give it to me hard or go cook it before they give it to me. Okay, and when you say give it to you hard, does that mean crack cocaine? Yeah, crack cocaine. They have to rock it up. So the other, do you know who George was getting his drugs from? Telly Hankton. Okay, the other people that you said that we saw the photographs of, all of them are dealing drugs. Do you know who they were getting their drugs from? He supply all of them. He sell all of them. You say he. Who do you mean? Telly Hankton. Okay. How do you know that? Multiple times like, well, the way they had it set up that whenever he come around there, he come bring the bag of cocaine, give it to Nakia. Nakia would take it and go put it in the yard. And it's like, I don't know how to really explain it. You got people walking up the street all day. So whenever he come out with the drugs, they come from everywhere. They come get their drugs, you know, and go back. When you say when he comes with the drugs, are you talking about Telly? Telly Hankton, yeah. Then when you say people come from all over, are you talking about crack users? No, dealers. Okay, people like who are looking to buy drugs, yeah. People looking to buy, they pull up in cars and multiple people. Would Telly sell directly to crack users on the street? No. Nakia, Dump, Terrell, everybody else like me. I'm selling crack, like breaking it down, selling it and stuff like that. All right. What kind of quantities was Telly distributing to people? I bought like quarter keys from him before, half a key, two and a quarters. He ain't selling nothing under an ounce. Nothing under an ounce? Nothing under an ounce. Now, we showed some pictures up there with Pluck, yes. Brian Broussard. Who was he friends with when he was out there? Friends with? Yeah. Well, we all grew up together, so everybody was like a big family, like homeboys or whatever around there on the street. Okay, were there any... Was he friends with Derek Smothers and Terrell Smothers? Well, he was like... They was his big homie. We call it big homie, like when an older guy take a liking to you. They look out for you, you know, bring you home always, like give you, treat you like a little brother or whatever. Okay, so who was who in that relationship? Well, Pluck was like a little brother to dump and trail back then before he went to jail or whatever. Pluck was hustling with them. Would they look out for him? Yes, buy him clothes, get him drugs or whatever, you know, Make sure he's straight or whatever, because we were young, going to school, so these dudes are older. You know what I'm saying? So we was under them, and we go around, you know, they make sure we go inside certain times of the night. But when we back out on the street, you know, we out there, and they making sure nobody mess with us because, like, they were up selling drugs. You said some of those dudes were older. Who were the older ones? Nakia, Dump, Terrell, Telly. You had Ennis, Anthony Commodore. You had Beezer, Buki. Was Buki Arthur Stewart? Yeah, Arthur Stewart. That's Journey's big brother. A lot of guys who used to be out there, but as far as, but they ain't on trial right now. But a lot of older dudes was out there. But me, Pluck, Dew, and Journey, we was the youngest ones around there. How much younger would you say you were about from, say, Telly? Besides Telly? Safe from Telly. He's about 10 years older than me. Okay. Did you have an uncle who was out there too? Or I'm not sure what his relationship is. Harold Jones? That's my big cousin. Big cousin? Yeah. Him and Telly, they grew up together. So he was getting drugs from Telly and George too. Okay. And on one of your convictions that you are serving a life sentence on? That's my co-defendant. Yeah. Okay. And who was he getting the supply from? From George and Telly. All right. You said at some point Derek and Terrell went to jail? Yeah, like in 2001, they went to jail. I know Terrell went to trial and got found guilty, so they never let him back on the street. 
but dumping them, they were still out there. Okay, would the police come around Josephine Street a fair amount? Yeah, they come, but not much. But the way it was set up, Josephine, it's from the area we'd be in from like Simon Boulevard, then you got Saratoga, and then you got Daniel Street. So it's like a three block span. And you got guys like, you had the Hankton stay right here between Simon Boulevard and Saratoga, still right there. Then you had other people like Darnell Stewart, they stood between Saratoga and Daniel. So from that area, the people sitting out there, if they see a police car, they're going to holler heads up at one time. That will give everybody down there time enough to go in the alley or stop doing what they were doing until the police pass. You know what I'm saying? And what would you guys do when the police would come by? We sit on a porch or go in the alley or just do whatever to like make it like we ain't selling no drugs or stand on the sidewalk or like that. Would you guys keep firearms with you? Guns? Yeah. Who would have those? Depends on, really depends. Sometimes people take turns holding guns. So like, say some people have multiple convictions. So if they have a lot of convictions, they don't want to hold a gun because if they get caught with a gun, they know for sure they're going to do time or whatever. So they might have, say, a person like me. I'm younger. I had no convictions or whatever. I will hold a gun, you know, sit on a porch or be in an alleyway. So in case somebody come around there trying to rob people or shooting, different things like that. When you got out of juvenile, you said George hooked you up with some crack. Did he hook you up with any firearms? Yeah, he gave me a gun. When I first gone, he gave me a high point nine. He was just like, man, you got a gun? I'm like, no. He said, look, man, you tripping out here. You got to get you a gun in case somebody try to rob you, strong arm you. You know, I was 16 when I come home, so kind of young. He like, man, you got to have that in case somebody play with you or whatever. You can handle your business. You know what I'm saying? Was it safe to say he was helping you kind of see what you needed to do? Saying like, keep a gun because if somebody rob you or strong arm you or try to take you from you by force, you know what I'm saying? You got to have a gun to handle your business. Shooting, killing, whatever you have to do to make sure they don't take your shit. At some point in time, did you start buying more drugs from George? I continued to buy drugs off him up until like 2005. But like sometimes I might go to jail for one day, bond out. I went to jail for juvenile in between like June, got out in August, like 30 days. So whenever I get out though, he stayed right down the street from my house. So whenever I come home, we go back and we do it again. You know what I'm saying? Same process. And you said that you got to the point where you were buying about a quarter of a kilo or getting a quarter of a kilo of crack? Right. Was George always providing that to you? The quarter kilo? Yes. When I was getting a quarter kilo, I had started messing with Telly. That was like around 2006. Because when I went to George, he like, man, I got to wait on Telly to come around here. So in that, so what does that mean? You went to George for what? I went to George? Oh, when I asked him for the quarter key and from there he like he couldn't do it like that. You know what I'm saying? Which means what? He didn't have he didn't have enough weight to do that to give me that much credit because I'm spending five thousand with him. He didn't want to give me the other five thousand because he's like he didn't have it to afford to lose. So the main thing, like, they ain't gonna give you nothing they feel they can't take a loss with. Okay. So you know, if you mess it up, then they know they will never get their money. So George couldn't do it. So he like, man, then I went to Telly. So when I went to Telly, he fronted it to me. So did that cause a problem if you stopped going to George and went to Telly or no? No, not really, because it was all the same drug. I'm saying the same drugs because you got George, he got drugs, but he sell what he sell. But when you go to Telly, it's the same thing. They like, seem like they work together. So when I go to Telly, it wasn't no problem because when I went and picked drugs up from Telly, he was sitting on George's porch. So it ain't like he said nothing and nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's cool. Where was George's porch? Jackson. Between Daniel and Saratoga on Jackson Street. How many blocks approximately was that from Josephine Street? One. Okay. So close by. How many times did you directly buy drugs from Telly? Four times. The only reason why I remember because it was 2006. 
I was home like six to eight days after Katrina. So that's when I really was dealing with him. Okay, how are you able to afford to buy such or get such large quantities? When I came home, like our house got burned down during Katrina or whatever, it caught fire. So my mama had fire insurance and stuff like that. So she had like $3,500 for me because I lost all my clothes, shoes, and everything. So when I come home, she had the money for me. Instead of me buying clothes and stuff, I went and bought more drugs to get started. And my par gave me a little money to put with it. And so you said four times. When you got drugs from Telly those four times, what quantities were you getting? I went in with the 5,000. I'm like, look, man, I got 5,000. You know what I'm saying? Go and let me, front me the other quarter kilo or whatever it is. I'm going to make sure I pay you the money. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I make the 5,000 I owe you, I'm going to give it to you. And did he end up giving you? Yeah, he gave it to me. So did you end up getting an entire half a kilo? Yeah, a whole kilo, half a kilo. When you went to Telly on that first occasion, did you go directly to Telly or did you? No, P-Dub, Pee-Wee. He's dead now, Terrell Jackson. We called him P-Dub. That would be P-D-U-B? You don't know? P-Dub, like P-E-A. Okay, and then Pee-Wee? Yeah, we call him Pee-Wee too. Okay, so you went to him first. And where was he when you went to him? P-Dub? He was on Josephine Street. He used to sit like right there by, you had, I think, Stacey Hankton stay right there and Judy Hankton stay right there. Judy and Cheryl were staying in the house, so I don't know exactly whose name was on the rent or whatever. Okay. And why did you go to him? Because I asked him where Telly at. He like, he ain't out right now. I'm like, man, call him and tell him I'm trying to get a quarter key or whatever. I'm like, but holler at him and let him know I'm trying to get it from him. You know what I'm saying? See if he's going to do it for me. So why would you go to P-Dub to, because I ain't have a direct number on Telly. Like when he went outside. So usually if he outside, you can go straight up to him or whatever. But when he ain't inside or whatever, if you call one of them, ask them, they're going to call him and they're going to let him know what's up and set it up or whatever and tell him to come around there. So who were the individuals that you would go to in order to get in touch with Telly? They had one dude named Bo, Dump. I went to P-Dub and George Jackson, Nakia. Really, any one of them you going to call and ask them to look for him, they're going to call and they're going to let you know if he's around there or if he come around at what time or whatnot or whatever. Okay, and did that chain of communication usually work pretty well? Yeah. All right, so the first time you went to P-Dub, and how long did it take for you to get off of that amount of half a kilo? It, I did that in like three days, but I wound up going to jail. It was in 2006 I went to jail because I got out like March 21st or something, and I got the drugs, I paid them, you know what I'm saying? His half, his 5,000, and then I wound up going to jail and messing around with some heroin. Got caught in the house, whatever. I did like 30 days, then I got back out. Did you pay him the other 5,000 you owed him? I ain't owe him another 5,000. The first 5,000 was mine. I just wanted to pay him his 5,000 so I wouldn't be indebted to him. Got it. And then did you buy from him again? Yeah, when I came home, I went back to selling. Okay, and who did you have to go to? Did you go directly to him or no? Dump. He went outside. Like, he don't really be outside in the daytime like that. You know, if he be outside, you got to be outside like 2, 3 in the morning, 1 in the morning. He be out there around that time. But, you know, whatever. I need drugs and I'm trying to get mine now. I'm going to go to them, ask them where he at or whatever. They're going to call him and then he's going to come out there. And when he come out there, you're going to see him down the street or they're going to come tell you right out there. Okay, so who did you go to the second time? Dump. Dump? Yeah. All right. Then if I can, when you get the drugs from Telly the first time, was that on George's porch or the first time with P-Dub? No, it was on Josephine. Okay. How does that work? 
does Telly bring it directly to you? Well, he come. He go by one of his auntie's house. Well, it depends on the time. After the storm, they were staying right there next to each other on, I think it's 2004 and 2006, Josephine Street. And which auntie was that, do you remember? Judy Hankton and Cheryl was living in one house after the storm, and his cousin Stacy Hankton was staying next door, like a double duplex that he was staying right there. That's all the porch we all used to be on. So you went to one of those houses to get the drugs? Yeah, when I came down there. When he came out there, P-Dub like called me down the street or whatever, like, man, red down here. You better come around the corner, be right there. See, they said that because when he come around there with the drugs, he don't want to be sitting out there waiting with the drugs. The police could come, anything. So he wants you to be right there. So as soon as he come, you get your drugs and go on by your way or whatever. And you mentioned Red. Is that a nickname? Red. He go by Third Red, Wild, Wild Bill, sometimes different names. Okay. Then the second time when you went through Dump, where did you get the drugs? I went by George Jackson's house. Was that when he was on the porch? Yeah, he was on the porch. Well, what happened was I called Dump when I seen Dump. Dump, that's my cousin, baby daddy. So he lived right with my cousin. So when I see him, I'm like, what's up, Red? He like, I'm on a call or whatever, trying to get. I'm like, man, when you holler, tell him I'm trying to do the same thing or whatever. So he said, I'm going to call him. So probably about an hour, two hours, he pulled up back around there. He said right around the corner right now by Jackson, George House. He said on Jackson Street, he like, come around there. When I went walk around there, Telly was the way the house is. They got a yard around it with a little porch at the end. George was right there on the gate by the apartment, and Telly was sitting on the step, and I went in the gate, you know what I'm saying? Okay, then the third time you bought that quantity, and again, was this? He came straight to my house this time. Okay, where was your house at that point? On Josephine, 2022 Josephine Street. All right. And who did you have to go through in order to get in touch with him? I see him coming down the street. I flagged his truck down. He driving a Cadillac truck or whatever. So when I seen him, a Cadillac truck? A Cadillac truck. Escalade, yeah. So when I see him, I flagged him down. He pulled over. I got in the car and I gave him the money. Told him what I'm trying to get. He said, all right, give me a few minutes. I'm going to be around here. And I was just sitting on my mama's porch and it was kind of getting dark. And I just seen him come walking up the street. We went in the house and he told me I shorted him $150 too. So he made me give him the $150. He told you you shorted him? I shorted him $150, yeah. The money was kind of short. Okay. So we went in the house. He gave it to me in the brown paper bag. Did you give him $150? Yeah. I gave it out of my pocket right then and there. Okay. And again, was that hard, meaning crack, cocaine? Yeah, hard. The fourth time you got, are we talking about a half a kilo of crack? It's half a kilo, half, two quarter keys. Okay, the fourth time that you got it, who did you have to go to in order to get in touch with? I seen him out on his auntie's porch. Which auntie was that? Do you remember? On sh being in porch. On Josephine Street? Yeah, on Josephine Street. Where did he give you the drugs? He was right there on the porch. When I went down there, I seen him. I hollered at him, gave him the money. When I gave him the money, he left. He just told me to be around here because he ain't never had a cell phone on him. He don't really do that. He just be all around the neighborhood and alleys, riding around, whatever, like that. Okay, did you ever get soft? The last time I got some soft from him. How much of it was soft? A quarter key. You stated earlier you didn't really know how to deal with soft? No, I took that. I got some partners down the street, like the dudes who are in my conspiracy and stuff. They sell potter bags. So when you say down the street, down the street where? On Josephine Street. Like Josephine and LaSalle, stuff like that. Okay, and is that 
how many blocks down from you is that? Like two blocks. You got Simon Bolivar, Liberty Street, and then the next street is LaSalle. You gave it to who? It was Kevian. Then I had, it was Kevian, TD, Terrell Holmes, whatever. They ain't on the charges though. Okay, did they sell soft all? Yeah, they sell powder, like individual powder bags, dime bags, 20 bags, stuff like that. Okay, so on your side of Josephine, you were selling, they sell all like crack, crack rocks, heroin, and weed. Then a few blocks down, they sell powder. Yeah, down the street, they sell powder. Yeah. And everything else. Was there a time, if I can just kind of go back a little bit, I apologize, when you were getting from George and he actually gave you some soft? Yeah, it was by Daniel's house. This is like, that was in 2005. We had came from Cheesecake Bistro, the restaurant or whatever. He said he was waiting on Telly or whatever. Who were you with? George Jackson. So where did you go with George Jackson? It was in Cheesecake Bistro. I think I'm saying it right. On St. Charles between Josephine and St. Andrew Street. It was like a little restaurant right there. Okay. And you guys went and we were sitting in there eating or whatever. Trying to kill time or whatever. Waiting on telly. Waiting on telly. Waiting on telly for what? To bring the coke or whatever. Because he said he ain't having it right then and there. He was waiting on Telly to bring it to him. Okay. So we sit there and we ate and he ordered some steaks. I ordered a cheese pizza. So we sat there and ate or whatever. By the time, you know, we finished or whatever, we went back on Jackson and Dryads. I mean, Jackson and Daniil. Jackson and Daniil, Jackson and Dryads. So we went by his mama's house or whatever. We sitting there waiting. Went by whose mama's house? George Jackson. Because my mama's still right there. And about three houses down, his mama's still right there. So we were sitting on the porch waiting. He called. He like, he on his way now. So when he got up, he's still by the... This is an apartment right next to his house. Next to whose house? George Jackson, his mama's house. Right there where he be at. All right. So we was waiting by the apartment. And so when we seen the car came, the headlights turned right there. The red Ultima or whatever. Until Telly got out. He was coming up the street. Who was driving that car? That's the car. Who is his cousin? Whose cousin? Telly Hankton cousin. Okay. So she dropped him off? Yeah, she dropped him off. He got out the car and come walking. That's the Neal Street coming towards Jackson. He went in Daniel's house. I don't know Daniel's last name, but he went in Daniel's house. Then George went down and he told me to wait. When he went down there, about two minutes he came out and stood on the porch like, come on. Told me, I want to walk down there by the porch and went in and sat on the porch. He gave me two soft four and a halves. I'm like, hey man, he gave you two what? Soft four and a half. Two soft four and a half? Four and a halves, yeah. Ounces of coke or whatever. Okay, so what did you do when he gave you? I told him, hey, 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 I don't want this shit. I'm like, give it to me hard or whatever. He like, all right, come on. So he stepped back in the house, pulled me in the house. And when I go in the house, Telly was sitting there. He was counting some money on the table. Had a little gun right there. And they had like 12 to 14, four and a half right there. Some hard, some soft. How many? About 14 of them. So I set the soft back down. He like, go on and get which one you want. So I was looking for the biggest four and a half hard. So I took two. Okay. So when you went inside that house, what was on the table? He had like 14 things like in a row, like lined up. How were they packaged? It was bagged up in the sandwich bags and it was like just sitting there. So there were 14 of them? Yeah, lined up right there. Were some soft? Some were soft, some were hard, yeah. And did you return your soft? And yeah, I set my two soft down and got the two hards or whatever. Who was inside that house? George Jackson, Telly Hankton, and Daniel. Telly was sitting there on the sofa, counting some money on the table right there. Going back a little bit in time, talking about Pluck, was there a time when things started going south on Josephine Street with Pluck? Well, when he had bought his car, he had bought 
I don't know, dude was tripping about us sitting on his auntie's porch or whatever, Telly Hankton or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So Pluck sell heroin. I was just selling crack or whatever. Did Pluck always sell heroin? Well, for Terrell and Dump, no. He was selling under them or whatever. But when they went to jail, he was on his own. Was he also selling crack cocaine for them? Yeah, he was selling crack, powder, and heroin. 2001, 2002, when he was hanging with Dump and Terrell. And so when Terrell and Dump went to jail, what ended up happening with Pluck? He started selling heroin, just all heroin by himself, whatever. He was doing good, you know what I'm saying? When you say he was doing good, what do you mean? He came up with the money. He had like about $70,000 strong. You know what I'm saying? So he was getting like a quarter key of heroin or whatever. That's not an ounce of heroin. But you know, you would make like $15,000 off each ounce of heroin. You know what I'm saying? So does a quarter key of heroin cost a lot more than a quarter key of crack? Yes. A quarter key of heroin, Pluck paying like $24,000 for it. So Pluck was doing well. Yeah, he was doing good. And he was younger? Yeah. So what did he do with his money? Well, at first he had bought like a car. At first he was trying to buy a motorbike that Telly's cousin was selling. But Telly didn't want to do to buy it, I guess. But Telly didn't want to do to buy it, I guess. I don't know what's the reason. Do you know which cousin of Telly's? Hankton. And she had a motorbike. Well, the dude Daniel sold it to Flail, and Flail was the old man. Okay. So Flail was trying to sell the bike. Pluck wanted to buy it. He like, no, you can't buy it, or whatever. So he went and bought him a Maxima. I think it was a 1999 Maxima from Rodney Robinson, Dudu. Wrecked it the next day right there on Josephine and Simon Bolivar. Were Dudu and Pluck good friends? Yeah, they hustled together. Yeah, they hustled together every day. So what did Pluck do when, once he wrecked the first car, probably, I don't even know, say, if it's a week or a month, but he had bought a new car, a 2003, bought a 2004 Maxima, and he put some rims and shit on it, you know, rims on it and things like that. Made it fancy? Yeah, made it fancy, royal blue. Call it a fishbowl because it's glass windows, no tinted windows or nothing. He had like his 20 inch rims on it. So you mentioned a motorbike. Did people in the Josephine Street area ride on motorcycles? Yeah, it don't matter. Motorcycles, dirt bikes, four wheelers. Tell he had the most. He had about three, four different motorbikes. Two big old Raptors. Two big old what? Raptors, four wheelers. They called them like Banshees and stuff like that. Dirt bikes. He had a chopper motorcycle too. Is that the kind of motorcycle with the handlebars? Yeah, it looked like a Harley Davidson, all chromed out and sh So when Pluck got the second Maxima, was he still dealing drugs in the Josephine? Yeah, he was still selling heroin. He was probably right there on Josephine, but the way you had sh Hankton still right there, then Durney and them still out on 2011. So then right around some grandpa, Mr. Say right across the street. So you know, when we ain't sitting on porch, we sitting on sh porch. When we ain't sitting on sh porch, we sitting on 2011. Was 2011 LaToya and Damien and Durney? Durney stayed there, but their house, they was like a, their mama was on drugs, so it was bust wide open. People selling drugs out there. Like, we ain't even go to school. We used to hang in there, smoke weed. You got all types of dudes from the project, just like a party house or whatever. Right. By sh house with Pluck, where we sit at, see Hankton, her daughter is my uncle's daughter. So that's my cousin. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like me, I had a right to sit on that porch because that's my cousin's porch. You know what I'm saying? So we sit there on the porch, Pluck sit on the porch and shit. So one day we was out there, Tully come down there, told him to get off the porch. Go ahead. Say, nigga, now what you tripping for? You know what I'm saying? Did he tell you to get off the porch? He was telling Pluck and them to get off the porch. Well, you know, we all hang together. So it's just like the same thing because he like, y'all, get from over here or whatever. Get off the porch. So Pluck asking him, why you tripping? Like, what's up, man? He's like, man, you can't sit here. He like, I'm sitting here. So why are you telling me something? Did Telly, before that incident, 
did he ever say anything to Pluck? Told him to stop parking his car right there on Josephine by Sh**'s house. Told him to stop parking around the corner because he didn't want him drawing no heat. Because he didn't want people to think that Pluck was selling drugs for him. Because Pluck's car was fancy? Or why would that draw some heat? I guess, yeah, it was fancy. But at the same time, Pluck is selling drugs and he wasn't buying drugs from him. So he feel like if you ain't selling drugs for him, he don't want you by his people. So he feel like if you ain't selling drugs for him, he don't want you by his people because he sells drugs from right there. So if the police come for you and catch him, it's like a conflict thing, like he feel like he running right there. When Telly asked Pluck to move his car around the corner, did Pluck do it? Yeah, he moved his car. But once he told him about stop hanging out on the porch, Pluck is tripping like, what's up, man? Why you keep fucking with me or whatever? You know what I'm saying? Like, man, you tripping. Cheryl ain't saying nothing. So why are you saying something or whatever? He like, man, little boy, get off his porch or whatever. What was Telly's reaction to Pluck? He jumped up to him. What's up? You want to fight Pluck? Like, I don't want to do no fighting. Man, you tripping. I don't do no fighting. I don't want to fight you. Like, you tripping. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Telly, what's up? Like, you want to be a big boy and all this shit? What did you all end up doing? We went to 2011. Well, we got off the porch eventually. You know what I'm saying? And we went down the street. And so, when we just down there in the house and shit, Pluck vent, whatever you call it, speaking his mind like, man, this nigga tripping, man. Why he keep fucking with a nigga like he playing? He gonna make a nigga bust his ass or whatever? Okay, so when you guys were having that conversation, where were you? In 2011, that's Dernie's house. Okay, and who was there? I think Toya always in the house because her mama be running around, so Toya always in there. I think Ennis, Ennis just got out of jail. He was there. I think Michael Fontaine, Damien. Was Dudu there? Dudu, yeah. We was on a porch together. We were down there together. Okay, so what was Pluck saying? He was just venting like, man, why the nigga keep fucking with me? Like, man, this nigga, why you hating on the nigga or something? That man, fuck that nigga. Man, that boy put his hand on me. I'm gonna fuck that boy up or whatever. Like he gonna kill Telly or whatever. Was he upset the way that Telly was treating him? He wondered, like, why Telly keep fucking with him, keep on. Like, if it ain't this one day, get off the porch of this. Like, he always keep, like, nitpicking. Like, trying to start some shit or whatever. Okay, did you guys in that conversation talk about killing Telly? I'm saying that was Pluck's main whole thing. He be like, man, he keep fucking with me. I'm going to have to do him something. I'm going to have to kill him. I don't know what's wrong with him. Why he keep fucking with a nigga and shit like that? You know what I'm saying? Did you all have some kind of agreement to go and kill Telly? No. I'm saying Pluck saying what he wanted to do. That's on him. It's his decision what he wants to do. I'm just there with him. I ain't really. We ain't no, oh, we gonna kill Telly shit like that. He's saying what he want to do if he keep fucking with him. Right. And then sometime after that conversation, did Pluck end up getting shot and Dudu? Yeah, they got shot. But one day on, I don't know how long it was, but I was walking home one day. So off Jackson, I turned off Saratoga. So when I'm walking on the street, before I got to Daniil close to my house, I see Telly coming in the street in an S10 truck. He backed the truck all the way up, parked it, and hopped out the truck. It's like 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. So ain't nobody really out there. He come walking up. Man, what's up? Why you looking at me like that? I don't know what you mean. Looking at you like what? He like, man, what's down with you little boys? Like, what's up? Y'all tripping and shit. I'm like, what you talking about? He like, man, this shit with Pluck. I'm like, man, whatever you and Pluck got going on, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm like, man, I ain't never disrespect you in that. So why are you jumping out on me or whatever like that? All right. At first he was like, I'm going to holler at your big brother. I'm like, I'm my own man. You can holler at me if I did you something. I ain't do you nothing, so what you tripping for? When he said he was going to holler at your big brother, who does he mean? My brother Bubba, my other brother Bubba. Was he still alive then? Yeah, he in prison. Oh, okay. How did that conversation end with Telly? It end 
well, he felt like if I plotted with Pluck to do him something or something, like, man, I ain't got no problem with you. I'm like, whatever you and Pluck got going, he's going to handle his own business and get at you or whatever. So he like, all right, all right, all right. And he got in the car. That was a wrap. Was that the last conversation you and Tully that me and him had based on the situation? Yeah. Was that after the conversation that you had with Pluck and Doodoo in 2011 Josephine Street? Yeah, it was after that. All right. Then at some point after that conversation you had with Telly, did something happen to Pluck and Doodoo? Well, I can't remember the date exactly or whatever, but I think it was 2004, like beginning of 2004. It was after. I know it was after Christmas and shit because Pluck had put the rims on the car and all this shit. So I knew it was after New Year's or whatever. So I'm on Saratoga. It's between Jackson Street and Josephine Street, Saratoga. They had a little yard I used to be in with a gate around it. And they had a big old plum tree on top of it. And they had a Bronco, a broke down truck in front of it. And I used to be right there because the police can see people passing a car or whatever. They couldn't see me because it was so dark at night or whatever. So when I was sitting on the porch just hustling or whatever, you know, I was selling drugs or whatever. So that's why I say that. Right. So I just hear like two gunshots. And when I look, I just see like right by Pluck's car. I see him like right there by the car. And I see Telly right there. And then I can't say I seen somebody run. But I just know he went to shoot like up the street. I heard like five more gunshots. Then I seen Pluck run. When I seen Pluck run, he turned around and shot two more times. You said he turned around. Who turned around? Telly Hankton. He shot two more times and hit Pluck, but he flipped like and kept running. Then he ran in the street and he had this dude named Kenny Caper was right there by the car. He like, get the fuck from around there. Like, told Caper that. Telly said that to who? Telly told that to Caper. Okay. And so you said he kept running down the street. Who was running down the street? Pluck ran up Josephine. I found out later it was Doodoo that ran down Saratoga. I couldn't really see Doodoo because he was on a sidewalk on the other side of the car. So I just saw Telly shoot in that way, went around there by the girlfriend where Doodoo fell at by the bar where he got shot. And when Telly finished shooting, did you see where he went? He came down Saratoga, right there where Caper was at. Right there he told Caper to get the fuck from around there. He ran straight down in there. And Michael Foster is like a crackhead stay right there. It's a yard, but when you go through his yard, it come all the way out on Daniel Street, right behind, I don't know if it's Shirley's house, behind Shirley's house, you got Cheryl's house, and you had Leslie staying right there then. That's Tommy Hankton's mama. She died, but straight behind her house, that alley goes straight through Michael Foster's yard and come out behind that way. Were you hanging out in Michael Foster's yard? Is that where the, no, I was next to like two houses away from Michael Foster's yard. And so Michael Foster's yard where Telly ran, is that a straight shot? Yeah, it's like a straight shot. It's like when you go through the alley, like they must have had houses or gates, all that tore down, so it's abandoned. And when you run straight, you come out on Daniel Street right that way. Okay, so when you saw Telly running away, approximately how far away from you was he? Two houses, it ain't far. Probably about here to that wall, but not another length of that same wall. But it's right there. I can't describe. I don't know how wide a house is, but it's like two houses away. That's it. Okay. Did you have any problems seeing that it was Telly? No, I seen him. When he came, when he came right there, he had a rag around his neck and a hat on his head. And he went straight through the yard. Did Telly see you, if you're aware? No. Where exactly were you in front of that house? I was behind the gate. They had a porch right there. Were you by yourself? Yeah, I was by myself. What did you do after you saw that shooting? After I seen the shooting and shit, I went and walked around there and went by my house and I stayed around the corner. I'm just telling myself like, man, this nigga just shot Pluck, man. Did you find out what happened to Pluck? Yeah, as far as when we went around and shit after about a few minutes, you heard the ambulance and stuff come around there. So they were putting up the tape and shit. So I went on right there back by Saratoga. I seen the ambulance by a 2011 house, by Durney and Toya house. 
seen the ambulance right there. And then when we went back around, they had another ambulance right there on Simon Boulevard and St. Andrew Street by the bar room. They said that Dudu had passed out when he got shot. Did you eventually go to the hospital? Oh yeah. I called a little chick, Trina, to come bring me to the hospital to go up there. So when we got to the hospital, he had like the whole Hankton family up there, people up there. The Hankton family? The whole Hankton family, yeah. Like Cheryl, my cousin, Trico, all them people live in the neighborhood. You know, everybody knew Pluck, so everybody went to the hospital to see what was going on or whatever. Did you ever get to see Pluck that night? No. When we was up on the emergency ramp right there by charity or whatever, they said Pluck got shot. They was like he was going straight to surgery. Dudu was all right because he got shot in his, we just say ass. I don't know what they call the bone or whatever. Say he got shot in his ass or whatever. So when I was up there, I seen a kid crying, but I'm looking, I don't know if he really knew what happened, but by he was crying, I'm like, he must not really know till he did it. You know what I'm saying? Because he was crying crocodile tears or whatever. But when I was leaving off the ramp, I seen Telly and George pull up to like by the emergency ramp and get out. And they went up and walked up to the ramp to where everybody was standing at. So after you saw Telly shoot Pluck, you saw Telly, him and George came straight to the emergency room to see if Pluck, I guess, died or whatever. Did you know how long Pluck was in the hospital for? For months. Because when he was in there, he slid into a coma or whatever. So, And then we went up there like a few times to see whatever. But his head was like he had a lot of fluid in his body and stuff. Other than that, when we was around there, like will come around there because she worked at the hospital. She like, Pluck looked like he going to be all right, but he still swole. I think it took like a month or something or a month or two for him to come out of the coma or whatever. But right after that, I went to prison for attempt murder. Okay, before you went to prison, was there, I think this is probably afterwards when you got out of prison, are you aware of a time when Pluck got shot again? Yeah, 2005, I wanna say March. I got out in March. You got out in March? Yeah, March 2005, I came home because I went to trial or whatever. I came home and got acquittal. So we was on Jackson Street, Pluck, Darnell, Stewart, and Duda Robinson in a car the same maxima and everything. He come out and I'm like, Mike, what's up? He like, you got a gun? I'm like, no. Where were you? I was on Jackson and Daniel Street, like between Aretha Castle Haley, well, Dryad Street and Daniel Street on Jackson. So they pulled up around there asking, did I have a gun? I'm like, no, what's up? Who pulled up? Pluck, Darnell, Stewart, and Rodney. Pluck was driving though. And they pulled up asking me for a gun and shit. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, I just got into it with Pee Wee down there on Josephina LaSalle. Who was telling you they just got into it with Pee Wee? Darnie, Darnell Stewart. You knew who Pee Wee was? Yeah, I know Pee Wee. He grew up with my brother. He from Josephine Street. Okay. And so he was telling you he just got into it? Like... He would ask me for a gun, saying he just got into it with P-Dub down there on Josephine and LaSalle. I'm like, no, I ain't got no handgun. Then when he saw Rock, he dead now, but he used to be out there with me. So he went and asked Rock. But while he was talking to Rock, George came out the house. George stayed right there on Jackson and Daniel Street. He like, come here. I'm like, what's up? He like, man, what's happening with my boy? I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, man, they looking for a gun. Told me they just got into it with P-Dub. You know what I'm saying? He like, yeah. He like, who looking for a gun? I'm like, Dirty and them. He like, man, what's up, man? Why you don't handle that? I'm like, what you mean handle that? He like, don't worry about it. He said, what does that mean? Like, kill him, shoot him up or whatever. He like, man, stop them little boys from coming from around here. Told me stop coming from around there. So he was talking and shit. He got on the phone and he's like, man, the little boy's around here looking for a gun right now. Do you know who he was on the phone with? No. Okay. But he was telling somebody about them? Talking about Dernie and Pluck was right there on Jackson Street looking for a gun. 
Do you know what eventually happened to them? I want to say one hour, two hours, but I know from later on that day, we heard Pluck, Derny, and Dudu got shot up on Washington and LaSalle by the red light, but it was like P-Dub and Rail supposedly did it. Rail, that's one of my partners or whatever. Okay, Rail is, that's P-Dub's nephew. Do you know Rail's name? Jarrell Jackson. What was P-Dub's name? Terrell Jackson. So you heard that they did it? Yeah, because he went to jail for it and everything. He said that was when they got into it with him, like P-Dub and them supposed to caught the nine on Washington and LaSalle, shot the car up. Okay, Rail today is where? Dead. Now, after 2006, when you were in jail, right, was there a time when you ran into Telly Hankton in jail? Yeah, two times. First time he came to prison, he was wanted... Well, he came to jail for it. He was wanted on Darnell Stewart's murder. So he had bonded out or whatever. So he came to jail. We was in Orleans Parish Prison, the old parish prison. And he came in there, and then he went home again on bond for that murder. And he came back on another murder, and we was in HOD the second time. Okay. The second time, did you have an opportunity to speak with Telly? Yeah. Well, twice. One time, like, you know... Like the way the jail is so old. One time when our shower blocked up, they let us go over there to the shower. And then when his shower was blocked up, they brought him on our side to take a shower. When you say the shower, you mean the shower on the, the shower in the prison on the floor. It's on the same floor, the eighth floor. Okay. And that second time when Telly was brought over to the showers near where you were being held, did you speak to him? Yeah, he came in a shower. It's like right after I got convicted. So when he came over there, it was just like October. The only reason why I remember, because I had just got transferred to HOD 8th floor. Okay, in August, after I had got found guilty. That's like a maximum security floor. So I went over there. So you guys were talking. You said you had been convicted. And when you were talking, did Telly ever ask you to do something for him? When we was in the shower, after I was telling him I got convicted and like, you know, it's down bad. He was like, man, I got to go to trial too, man. But did he have a trial that was coming up? Yeah, he had an upcoming trial, but he was telling me that he had a witness coming to court on him. And it was, I'm sorry, Telly's trial that was coming up was for what? For the Darnell Stewart murder. Okay. And he was telling you what? He was saying he got a witness coming to court and he seen how I got convicted off a witness or whatever. And he was like, he was scared that, you know, he got a witness coming because he might get found guilty or whatever. So in that conversation, he told you that he knew he had a witness coming forward against him? Yes. Okay. And what did he ask you to do? Well, probably about two weeks before that, I had told him I had a cell phone or whatever. And I went over there. He gave me some of the commissary stuff because I don't really be getting money or whatever. So he gave me some commissary and I told him I had a phone and all this stuff on the side of HOD. You're talking about the first time you spoke to him? Yeah, the first time I spoke to him, yeah. So when we was in the shower, he asked me did I be talking to Dump because Dump lived with my auntie. My cousin got a baby for him. He and my auntie, they live in the same house. So your cousin has a baby with Dump? With Derek's mother's. Okay, and Dump is good friends with Telly? Yeah, that's his homeboy. All right. So he asked me, did I be talking to Dump? And I said, nah. He was telling me Dump be writing letters and stuff. He said he asked me to do a favor and call Dump and relay the message or whatever. Okay. So if I can just clear something up. You had a cell phone? Yes, ma'am. Are inmates allowed to have cell phones in jail? No. Okay. Do a lot of inmates have cell phones in jail? In Orleans Parish Prison, they do. Okay, where would you keep the cell phone? They got a toilet. Then you have like a little pipe for the drain thing. And we used to unscrew it either like with a little piece of paper clip or we had like a little Allen key thing where we could unscrew it, sit the phone in there, screw it back up or whatever whenever you're using it. You ain't using it, you hide it in case sometimes the CEOs come down there and shake down. So when you had it in there, you got it screwed up. It don't look like anything been tampered with or whatever. Okay, and when Telly asked you to relay a message to Dump, 
What was the message he wanted you to relay? He told me to call Dump and tell Dump to call Squirt and tell him to go with the W. Okay. And who is Squirt? Squirt, Thomas Hankton. That's Tilly Hankton's cousin. Okay. And he told you to pass on a message to Dump? Told me to tell Dump to tell Squirt third said, you know. Tilly said, tell Dump. Told Squirt, he said, go on to the W. And what does a go on the W mean? What I'm understanding, kill a witness. Like, go and get rid of him. Okay. And did you, in fact, do that? Yes, ma'am. Did Telly offer you really anything in exchange for passing on that message? He just said he was going to help me with my appellate attorney because I just got a death sentence when I got found guilty. Okay. So, he's telling me whenever I get out, man, I'm going to make sure I get you an appellate lawyer or whatever. And I'm going to go through dump because dumping the family. And he's saying he doesn't want to deal with none of the women in my family, like giving them no money or nothing. So he'll go with Dump because him and Dump are cool with him. Dump in my family. So he's going to make sure Dump handle my business or whatever need to be done. So if you were to help Telly out of his situation, he would help you out of your situation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then there came a point in time later on when you were transferred to federal custody, right? Yes, ma'am. Is this a good place for break for about 10 or 15 minutes? Okay, Your Honor. Is that all right? Sure. We will take about a 15 minute recess. Let you all stretch a little bit. Please remain seated. Court is now in session. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Michael, I think I left off when you came over into federal custody. In 2012, was there a time when you were in federal custody and you saw Walter Porter? Yes, ma'am. Judge, is the microphone on? Oh, sorry. Did you know Walter Porter before? I seen him before, like, but as far as knowing him, as in hanging with him, I never hung with him, nothing like that. Okay. Whereabouts were you guys when you saw him? At a park in Central City. I mean, when you were in federal custody. In federal custody, we was on the docks. It was a court building, the holding tanks. Okay, you were with the marshals? Yes, ma'am. All right, who else was on the docks with you, if you remember? Even though there are other guys being in the holding tank, but I don't even know their names or nothing. I don't know who they was. Okay. Did you end up having a conversation with Walter Porter? Yes. What were you all talking about? Well, when I seen him, you know, he knew me from my situation of coming to jail in my case or whatever, and I seen him. I'm like, what's up? Whatever. He telling me he know a few people on Josephine Street who I'm cool with, whatever. He was raised up in that area or whatever. And I'm like, Hey man, word on the street is, man, you're supposed to have killed Skunk. Kenny Robinson is his real name. His nickname is what? Skunk. Okay, so you had heard this and were asking him about it? Yeah, I asked him like, man, word on the street, you're supposed to have killed Skunk. He like, yeah, man. He's like, Slim's supposed to have sent something on him or whatever. And I'm like, I don't think I really know Swim as in as Slim or whatever. He like, man, him and the dude be behind some dope or whatever, and he had took a hit on Slim. Okay, and so if you can break that down a little bit, and what he was saying to you was an individual by the name of Slim, yeah, somebody, Slim paying him to kill Kenny Robinson. Okay, and he in fact told you about that? Yeah, I asked him and he was like, yeah. Why would you have asked him about that shooting or that killing? Because word on the street, well, I had knew Kenny from our neighborhood and stuff like that. And word on the street was, but I knew by the situation between the dude really named Gmo or whatever as Kenny. Okay, and Skunk was having an issue possibly with Gmo? Yes. Okay. But Walter Porter gave the name of 
who that paid him? Slim, did he tell you any details about how much money he got paid? No, he never said none of that. Did you know where Kenny Robinson got killed? Yeah. Where? He got killed on Willow on First Street. Okay. And were you in jail? Yeah, I was in jail when it happened. Like I say, I heard about it, and I just asked him when I seen him. Okay. I believe those are all the questions I have for Mr. Anderson, Your Honor. It's my understanding that we are going to allow defense counsel to cross-examine him after lunch? Yes. So if he could be excused for now, and we will call other witnesses.